Hey guys, this is Retro Gaming 16 and welcome to a video tutorial on how to create gelatin-like physics on the programming language Scratch. The goal of this tutorial is to create an artificial wall of gelatin that will dip in and reshape when touched by the finger. I'd give this tutorial a difficulty raising of easy, so anybody with a basic knowledge of Scratch should be able to follow the content of this video. Anyway, let's begin. First off, we'll create two variables, a y impact variable, which will store the y position of the impact when a gelatin is hit by the finger, and the dip variable that will return a value of 1 if the gelatin is hit, and a value of 0 if the gelatin is not hit. So let's do that uh, shortly here. You can uh, find the variables in the data section right here. Variables are a very handy tool when you're creating scratch projects. Alright, so now on to the uh, scripting, or the sprites in this case. We're going to be creating two sprites, the gelatin sprite, which will make up the gelatin wall, and the finger sprite, which is, um, as I mentioned before, is going to be hitting the gelatin and causing the dip effect. For now, we want to work on the gelatin, but um, we'll quickly create the sprite for the finger. Uh, I'll just draw a very kind of simple finger, I guess. Just create something like that, I suppose. Really not, uh, doesn't need to be too complex. I guess I could create a thumb here. Doesn't really look too good, but anyway. I may as well just give this a little bit of color so that it'll actually, uh, you know, appear on uh, the screen and can be identifiable. So again, you can create any sort of drawing that you wish. I just, uh, you know, did a simple drawing here. On the gelatin, we want to actually create a line that starts from the middle and goes out into the end. Uh, I guess we'll color it blue doesn't uh, matter too much, of course, which color you use. You want to make sure that your line is pretty straight. The reason we are drawing a line is because each line will represent a fiber of the gelatin. So anyway, uh, let's start by creating a script that will begin at the top of the screen and down and render the gelatin wall. So for now, let's hide uh, this hand here. And uh, we'll just tell it to show when it starts. Also, we'll take this gelatin and uh, let's have it begin at the top of the screen where it'll start at x0 and y, uh, we'll say 1 or 2, no, that's right, 1, uh, let's say 55, just because we don't want it to be quite at the top of the screen because it'll mess up with the coding that we are going to do. So next we'll do a repeat until touching edge, which will repeat an action until the condition is met. So we'll change y by negative, let's say, 1.5. And every time it's going to go down and create a clone, which will create a big, long line of jello. So as we can see here, we get a line of jello that will move down. Also, we want this to hide and each clone to show when it is made. Okay, next we will teach, we will tell each part of the gelatin wall or clones that have been made to react when touched by the hand and store the y position of the impact in the well y impact variable. So what we're going to do here is when I start as a clone, this will tell it tell each clone what action to perform. We are going to, um, I believe, forever, yes, and then if we're going to check to see if it is touching the finger, then we are going to store our dip variable as 1, meaning that it'll, it'll um, the dip variable will sense that, or the clone will sense that something is being, that the gelatin wall is being touched, meaning that dip will equal 1. That'll come in handy uh, a little bit later, but so we're going to say set the y impact variable to the y position where it is being hit. We'll all do this uh, repeating wall touching, repeat until not touching uh, finger. 
that way uh, other clones won't won't interfere with what's going on <clears throat> so here's the most complicated part now we'll tell the gelatin re to react to the impact based on the distance between its y position and the y position of the impact in other words the closer the impact the more it dips creating a valley shape in the gelatin we will also set the aforementioned dip variable to one so that other clones can follow the same action of course, we have done that already, so what we will do is we will change our x value by, this is a little bit of an algorithm I created, it is 240, which is the max um, x position, minus the absolute value, which we can use in the operator section, minus, uh, or not minus, but y position minus the y impact. So this will tell the difference between the y, the clone's y, and the impact. And then finally, we're going to divide this by 50 just to shorten it a little bit because it can create uh, certainly a large number. So we want to make sure that it turns out a bit small. And actually, let's change this to 100. All right, so... We'll tell the gelatin to reshape itself once it is hit by the finger, but not at the rate of when it is impacted. So this way, it will return slowly, but not at the same rate that it is hit by the finger. That should about uh, cover the gelatin after we finish this. So what I am going to do is say that for all the clones, if the dip variable is equal to 1, then we'll perform the same actions as the uh, clone will undergo when it is touching the finger. So that way each clone can do the same thing, uh, even if it's uh, a clone that is not touching the finger. So say if dip equals 1, uh, we do want to set dip to 0 here, just so that dip is not always equal to 1. So we'll say set y impact. Actually, we don't want to do that quite yet, or at all, really. <laughs> But basically, um, here we have our main clone script. So we are also going to, as I said before, tell it to return to the same uh, position, but is not as fast as it is when it is hit. So we'll do if x position is greater than 0, which will always be so if um, the dip effect equals 1. Then we'll say change x by 240 divided by you know, the main script divided by negative 50. So this will do it, this will return at about half of the rate, well, exactly half of the rate of the 100, which is what we have before. So anyway, um, actually, I believe I made a bit of a mistake. I believe we want this to be negative 100 and this to be 50, just because when a number is divided by a larger value, then it'll actually become shorter, so <clears throat> or of a lower value. So anyway, that about cover it, covers it for the gelatin. So now let's move on to the finger. For this, we'll say forever go to mouse pointer so that it'll allow easy movement by the player. So let's see what we have here. As you can see, if we wait for the gelatin wall to render, we can wait for the finger, and as the finger touches the gelatin, you can see it dips in, and it also slowly dips back, or quite fast in this case. Anyway, you can always tinker around with the uh, rate of return, or the rate of reshaping, as I like to call it. So that about uh, covers, for our, covers it for our gelatin tutorial here. I hope you did find something useful out of this. In case you want to make, you know, some kind of cool little game out of this, uh, a bit of trivia. I actually came up with this idea from any uh, Yoshi's Island players will recognize this. <clears throat> but basically, there's a boss in the original Yoshi's Island called Sluggy the Unshaven, and in that boss, you would have to throw eggs to attack its heart, and it would utilize similar physics to this here. Anyway, this concludes the gelatin physics tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. If you did not enjoy this video, feel free to leave a, leave a dislike, and I'll see you guys next time.